Hello everyone! In this video I will explain what uniqueness is in Sudoku and how it can help you to solve puzzles with some very simple logic. But first, would you believe there's a controversy about this technique? A controversy in Sudoku. How novel. Well, this uniqueness technique is based on the idea that every Sudoku puzzle must have a unique solution. So if you come across a situation where placing a number would result in more than one solution, then that number could not be true right? And then you can eliminate that number based on the uniqueness rule. More about that controversy in a moment, but first let's take a look at what a unique rectangle is. Here you can see a unique rectangle on the 1 and 5. The definition of a unique rectangle is that the same two candidates appear in exactly two rows, two columns, and two blocks. Here you can see the 1-5 pair is in two rows, rows C and E, and two columns, columns 2 and 3, and in two different blocks, blocks 1 and 4. As you can see, this pattern forms a rectangle. The pattern always involves four cells in the shape of a rectangle or a square, which is a type of rectangle. This pattern is not valid if we believe that a Sudoku puzzle has to have a unique solution. That's why I suppose this pattern is called a unique rectangle, because it uses the uniqueness assumption and it forms a rectangle. In this scenario, the final solution could look like this, with the 1 and then the 5 in row C, and then a 5 and 1 in row E. But it could also be flipped with a 5 and then a 1 in row C, and then a 1 and then a 5 in row E. Either of these configurations would solve the puzzle without affecting any other numbers in the grid, and then the puzzle would have two solutions, which is not considered valid. That means we can use this uniqueness assumption to rule out or eliminate candidates if those candidates would result in a puzzle with more than one solution. The problem for some is that this is not stated in the original rules of Sudoku that a puzzle must have one and only one unique solution. So a purist would say that this is not a valid strategy since a Sudoku puzzle can have more than one solution. On the other hand, in reality, it is true that almost every published Sudoku puzzle has only one solution, and many apps check to see that there is only one solution, so the pragmatic person would say, go for it. If nearly all published puzzles have only one solution, and conventionally speaking, a puzzle with more than one solution is not considered valid, not considered acceptable by most, then this is indeed a valid strategy. I have a couple of examples of this technique so you can see how simple yet powerful it is, but before I show you how it works, I thought it would be interesting just for a minute to look at this discussion on Reddit. According to this purist, that kind of reasoning feels wrong. And here is another purist agreeing with it. I do respect purists, don't get me wrong, but at heart I'm a pragmatist, and here we have someone who is also a pragmatist. In other words, if this works, why not use it? So let's go ahead and do just that. Let's start with what is called a type 1 unique rectangle. A type 1 unique rectangle is when one of the four cells mentioned before has one additional candidate. Here you can see there is a 1-7 pair in two rows, two columns, and two blocks. The additional candidate in this cell is the 6. If we were to eliminate the 6, then we would have a unique rectangle pattern, and then we would have a puzzle with more than one solution, and since we are assuming that this puzzle has only one solution, then we can't eliminate the 6, and therefore this cell must be a 6. Let's take a look at what would happen if this cell was not a 6. Well, then in row D, this could be a 1 and this a 7, which would make this cell in row F a 7, and this a 1. 
but it could also work the other way around. We could flip this where this first cell is a seven, then this is a one, and then this is a one, and then this is a seven. So you see, if we eliminate the six, there would be two possible solutions to this puzzle. And since we are assuming that the puzzle has only one valid solution, then this cell has to be a six. Let's take a look at another type 1 unique rectangle. There are many variations of this, and in this video I will also show you types 2 and 3, but let's look at one more type 1. Here we have a situation with the 5 and 9 in rows E and F, and in columns 4 and 9, and also in blocks 5 and 6. So that conforms to the rule of four cells in two rows, two columns, and two blocks, creating a rectangle pattern. Now, this cell has an extra candidate, the 4. But without the 4, if we eliminate the 4, then we would have a unique rectangle, and the puzzle would have two solutions with the 5 and 9, right? If this is a 5, then this is a 9, and this is a 9, and this is a 5. But we could just as easily flip it so that this is a 9, this is a 5, then this is a 5, and this is a 9. And that would also solve those cells without affecting the rest of the puzzle. Therefore, for this puzzle to have one valid solution, this cell has to be a 4. So what about a type 2 unique rectangle? Here is an example of a type 2 unique rectangle. What we are looking for is two non-diagonal cells that have the same one and only one extra candidate. There is a 4-5 pair in rows D and F and columns 2 and 8 and blocks 4 and 6. So we have our two rows, two columns, and two blocks. Now notice these two cells in column 8 have the same one and only one extra candidate, the 3. These cells are non-diagonal, meaning they're not on a diagonal to each other. They are in the same column. So now we know that one of these threes has to be true, since otherwise we would have more than one solution, just like before. So to avoid having more than one solution, we know that one of these cells has to be a three, but we don't know which one. But any cell that sees both of these cells with the three cannot be a three, and therefore can be eliminated. Let me say that again. One of these cells is a 3, so any cell that sees both these cells cannot be a 3. Great. Now, these two cells have 3's in them and can see both the 3's in the unique rectangle. This 3 is in the same row as this 3 and the same block as this 3, so we can eliminate this 3. And this 3 is in the same column as both 3's, so it can also be eliminated. Let's take a look at another type 2 example. Here again we see a unique rectangle pattern in rows A and B, columns 2 and 9, and blocks 1 and 3. The 2-8 pair appears as a possible unique rectangle if not for the extra candidate. There is an extra candidate in the two non-diagonal cells in column 9, and the extra candidate is the 4. If not for the 4, then this would create a unique rectangle pattern resulting in two solutions with the 2 and 8. That means that one of these cells has to be a 4 to prevent that from happening, under the assumption that the puzzle should have one and only one unique solution. So now let's look to see if there are any cells with a 4 that sees both these cells, and yes, we have a 4 here that's in the same row and block as these 4's, so this 4 can be eliminated. And here in block 9, there's a 4 in the same column as both of these cells, so it can also be eliminated. Now that we have covered types 1 and 2 unique rectangles, let's take a look at one more variation. This is called a type 3 unique rectangle. In a type 3 unique rectangle, we again look for two non-diagonal cells that have extra candidates, that's plural, as opposed to a type 2 unique rectangle that looks for the same one candidate. 
Here we can see a possible unique rectangle in rows F and J, as well as columns 7 and 9, and blocks 6 and 9. So this conforms to the two rows, two columns, and two blocks rule. The 1-9 pair appears in these four cells, and without those extra candidates, we would have a puzzle with two solutions. So obviously, one of those cells should not be a 1 or a 9, since we are using the assumption of uniqueness that every valid published Sudoku puzzle should have one and only one solution. Now for the extra candidates. In this example, there are two extra candidates that are different, the 4 and 7. And after I go through this example, I will show you another type 3 example with three extra candidates. But let's start off with this example with just two extra candidates. Now what? Well, as in a type 1 or type 2 unique rectangle, one of those candidates, the 4 or the 7, has to be true in order to avoid the unique rectangle pattern. We can treat these two non-diagonal cells as one cell with a 4-7 pair. Now, if we look across the row, there's a cell with a 4-7 pair in the same row. So this 4-7 together with the 4-7 in the unique rectangle forms a locked pair, meaning the 4 and 7 are locked into these three cells in row F. Now any cell that sees all three cells, the 4-7 pair here, and the original two cells with the 4-7, any cell that sees all three cells, which is any cell in row F, cannot be a 4 or a 7, so we can eliminate this 7. Not much of a payout there, but sometimes you can eliminate a lot more than just one candidate. Let's take a look at one more type 3 unique rectangle, but this is with a triple as the extra candidates. Here you can see the unique rectangle pattern with the 3-6 pair appearing in rows C and G columns 4 and 6, and blocks 2 and 8. The extra candidates are in these two non-diagonal cells, and those extra candidates are a 2, 5, 9 triple. To avoid the pattern of a unique rectangle, one of these three candidates must be true. Just like before, but now we are looking for a naked triple. Again, let's treat these two cells as though they are one pseudo cell with a 2, 5, and 9. And now let's find the other cells that can form the triple. And here we have in the same row a 2, 5 cell. And here we have a 5, 9 cell. So now we have our naked triple. These four cells together, the two from the unique rectangle, and then these two form the naked triple. That means that in this row, if there are any other cells with a 2, 5, or 9, they can be eliminated. And there is one cell here in row G with a 9, so that can be eliminated. I will be doing more Sudoku videos, so please hit the subscribe button if you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching, and I hope you learned something.